This is Greg Troutwine with Marine Technology TV. We're here at the Ocean Business 2017 in Southampton, and we're with Carl Kenny, the president and CEO of Kraken. Carl, you're a busy guy, first and foremost. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Greg. It's great to be here. Okay. Well, Carl, I'm sure most of the people who are watching this, most of the people who read the magazine, uh, know Kraken. Uh, but for the uninformed, can you give a brief overview of the company? Yeah, we're a uh, systems and sensor company. We started off developing synthetic aperture sonar a number of years back and have migrated now into building complete uh, complete systems. And in the near future, we're moving into uh, underwater robotics. So basically, I describe the company as a sensor to systems company. Okay. Carl, we've worked together I, I, for many years. Um, and I've always known you to be uh, an innovator, kind of pushing the envelope. Um, when you look at this subsea business today, the role of robotics, the role of automation, what do you see? Well, it's interesting. I mean, from what we see in all the sectors we play in, which is, you know, defense, uh, offshore oil and gas, science, there's a, a growing demand for more automation and more robotics, like we're seeing in every other industry. Um, in, in our game right now, uh, we, we talk about having under, uh, autonomous underwater vehicles, and, and in fact, I think, Greg, they're really automated underwater vehicles, and there's a big opportunity to apply artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms to make these systems even more smart and actually become unmanned. Because you think about it today, you're deploying a robot, it takes a team of people to get it out there, and the whole promise of the robots have not yet been realized in the underwater space. That creates a big opportunity, not only for our company, but for our industry across the, across the whole in terms of sensors, battery technology, propulsion, uh, software, uh, high-performance computing, and the actual machines and devices themselves. So the future looks really, really bright. Um, you know, I hear lots of laments from our, from our friends in the oil and gas industry uh, with the downturn, but that, that also creates opportunity. Um, it's an opportunity now to do things differently. And the seminal thinking that we're seeing in the oil and gas industry, particularly at oil at 50 to $60 a barrel, is how do we do things differently? And that's going to be uh, driving, I think, a, a whole new uh, resurgence in, in robotics. The last wave of innovation really in this industry, one could argue that happened in the late 90s mm -hmm. when, with the proliferation of ROVs, mm -hmm. when we saw ROVs come on. And that was primarily driven, uh, the investment and in, in the R&D behind that, from the oil and gas sector mm -hmm. to take advantage of these ROVs. And ROVs have become a multi-billion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. You know, I expect the same thing to happen with, with unmanned, uh, unmanned systems uh, as we move forward. Um, I mean, you talk about the oil and gas business, obviously, um, it's near and dear to all of our hearts. Um, when you look at that business today, and again, we cover it from many angles, but when we talk of an industry that has sought to increase efficiencies across the board, shall we say, uh, what do you see when you see the offshore oil and gas today? Right along the lines you're talking about, Greg, it's, it's increased efficiency and lower costs. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a new regime. I'm not an expert on where the price of oil is going to be, but whether oil is at $10 a barrel or $1,000 a barrel, we have billions and billions of dollars of existing assets that are deployed subsea that need to be inspected, maintained, and repaired. So let's take an example of subsea pipelines. Over 250,000 kilometers of subsea pipeline that need to be inspected. Doing that conventionally with surface ships and men and, and equipment is very, very expensive. And the costs and the efficiencies can be dramatically increased by the utilization of robots. We're almost there. Mm -hmm. We now have the sensor technology, whether it's sonar or laser or, 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 or optical technologies, to, to become the eyes for these machines. Mm -hmm. We're seeing high performance computing costs plummet. You know, heavy lifting going on in other industries are aiding our industry to bring true autonomy and true artificial intelligence to these devices. And that's going to become a tremendous cost savings. We're, we're talking orders of magnitude in, in savings, mm -hmm. doing things the new way versus doing things the conventional way. And again, as I said, the existing infrastructure that's there, whether it's you know, pipelines or trees or cables, and now also the renewable sector with, with wind turbines and, 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 and an ocean tidal power are all going to be demand drivers, huge demand drivers for this type of technology. Well, I know with your history in this industry, you can attest probably is better to any that you have to invest to move forward. Um, you know, we've looked at some of the big issues of robotics in the industry. If we could really just look, dig down into Kraken right now, how you're investing, 
um, and the technologies that you're really focused on, the technologies, the specific products and systems that you are now bringing to bear to address some of these problems. Absolutely. I mean, it, in, in our game, it, it's, it's a mantra inside crack and it's innovate or die. And uh, we've done that from the get-go. Um, we looked at synthetic aperture sonar technology about seven years ago, saw, hey, this is really cool technology, but it was very expensive, particularly for commercial uh, the mm -hmm. commercial world and ocean science. It was primarily a military technology. And we sought to change that, and we did. Mm -hmm. We invested heavily in, in commercializing SAS to now it's... Uh, able to compete with you know, high-end side scan mm -hmm. and, and provide tremendous uh, cost advantages uh, to, to, the, to the operators. Recently, uh, we invested in laser technology. Uh, mm -hmm. We opened an office in, in Germany, in Bremen, and have some really smart uh, people up there uh, doing work on uh, both laser imaging and also artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. All of these uh, sensors are coming to, together in, in, in our platform strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, we just launched a, a new high-speed towfish called Catfish, okay. which uh, is just finishing its sea trials right now successfully, I'm, I'm happy to add. Um, so that's our first foray into, into the robotics world. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to stop there. Um, we're, we're a small micro-cap company, but that gives us the ability to go to the, to, the, to, to the market, raise some capital to continue to fund the development of these new technologies. In the, in the near term, uh, Greg, uh, you will be hearing uh, you know, more of our work in, in robotics. We, we just signed a, uh, an IP licensing deal with Fraunhofer, which mm -hmm. is a big German research institute. Mm -hmm. uh, did a really cool 6,000 meter uh, rated AUV. So we're uh, licensing that technology and acquiring that AUV. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, we're building on that to a program we call Thunderfish, which is uh, is our, going to be our uh, turnkey, uh, full underwater robotic uh, system, including our, our uh, sonar sensors, our laser imaging sensors, all the work that we're doing in AI and machine learning to actually really become, I think, one of the first, if not the first, truly autonomous uh, vehicles that will have the ability to be cognitive of the environment and, more importantly, to be able to adaptive to the environment. Most of the robots out to the day are automated. Mm -hmm. So they go from a point A to point B to point C to point D, mm -hmm. the so-called mowing the lawn, gathering data. And in fact, it's not really an efficient way of doing it and requires a significant amount of post-processing of, of that data. We want to do it real time. We want to be able to tell the robot, go search this area and find me things that look like this. Okay. So that's the kind of efficiency that, that we'll be able to achieve and, and the enhancements that we'll give to these, to these platforms. And just finally, again, new technology, I think, as you might also attest, sometimes gets a little pushback from uh, people who have done it the way they've always done it. Absolutely. Um, I guess just if you can, in, in, a, in a big picture sense, uh, do you still see that today? And I guess if you do see it, what do you count as an important piece to kind of push technology to those who might resist it? Yeah, you see, I mean, it's kind of the innovation dilemma, right? Particularly in, in larger companies where they've been doing this thing the same way for years and years and years. And I've always said, and I have lots of friends who work in, in these big companies, and there's nothing wrong with big companies, except you have to have the courage to eviscerate yourself. Yeah. You have to have the courage to innovate. You have to have the courage to change. Yeah. And that takes risk. So, you know, people sometimes say, let's innovate, but let's not have any risk. They don't go hand in hand, right? Now, to your question about technology, Technology has advanced everywhere now. We don't have to wait 15 years for, to, to prove that a, a digital camera works or a new cell phone works. The same thing has to happen in our industry. That the technologies are robust. The underlying support infrastructure, mm -hmm. the techni you know, the techniques that are used, the the components, the modules mm -hmm. that are used, are proven to be very, very robust. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the military, you know, ad adopt things much faster. Why? Because they have to. Budgets are being cut back, and we have to do more with less. Okay. So the technology adoption rate, I think, is going to increase, and it'll be driven by innovation. Okay. Carl, you're a busy guy. I'm sure you have things to get to. Again, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Greg. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Cheers. All right. This is Greg Troutwine with Marine Technology TV.